Tonight at five weeks after the violent death of Tyree Nichols, five former Tennessee officers make their first court appearance in connection to his death. Plus, Wisconsin could soon be surrounded by states that legalize marijuana. So what does that mean for the future of marijuana in our state? Legislators explain. And how a pop-up shop this weekend is helping support local black-owned businesses during Black History Month. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. Half of Wisconsinites 21 or older live less than a 75 minute drive from a legal marijuana dispensary and that's according to a new study from the Wisconsin Policy Forum. With Minnesota seemingly ready to legalize recreational marijuana this year, it could soon be even more accessible to Wisconsinites. Our Braden Ross joins us with more on what that could mean for Wisconsin. Braden? Yeah, soon Wisconsin could be surrounded by states where marijuana is legal. I spoke to researchers and legislatures today to, to learn what that could mean for legislation here. Here's what they told me. Wisconsin Senate Minority Leader Melissa Agard is keeping score. And by her count, Wisconsin is behind. Wisconsin is an island of prohibition and it's becoming more and more so. According to a new study from the Wisconsin Policy Forum, half of Wisconsinites live within 75 minutes of a legal dispensary. When you go to Illinois or Michigan, uh, the cars in the parking lots are overwhelmingly Wisconsin. People are willing to drive um, for an hour or more and spend their hard-earned money in another state in order to have access to legal cannabis. Now, with Minnesota seemingly on the brink of legalization, that access could expand even more. We are not dealing with necessarily the same reality um, f for marijuana and, and the availability of marijuana in the state that we were, you know, even two or four years ago. But while many Wisconsinites can now easily and semi-legally access the drug, varying laws can make things confusing for both consumers and enforcers. I think limbo is a great word for it. It is a really confusing kind of mix of, uh, of policy at the local, state, and federal level. Governor Evers included legalization in his 2023 budget, but that's something Republicans have consistently shot down in the past. Agard says she's expecting this year will be the same, but has hope that legalization in our neighbor states means it's only a matter of time for Wisconsin. Well, I very much believe that the genie is out of the bottle. Um, it's going to be happening. It's just a matter of when it happens and what it looks like. And with Republicans in control of the legislature, the governor's latest attempt at recreational legalization is again unlikely to pass. But some Republican legislatures do seem to be warming up to the idea. If it's stripped out of the budget, Agard says she plans to introduce her own bill later this year. Braden, thank you. Let's get a look at our first worn weather now. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti is on the weather patio with the latest. Gary? Well, Susan, it's sunny but cold out here with all that new fresh snow on the ground. It's keeping temperatures down and you can really see the band of snow on the visible cloud track. Of course, skies are sunny today. So take a look at that band of white from southern Iowa through southern and southeastern Wisconsin and northern Illinois. That's the fresh snow that fell yesterday. But notice that darker strip just north of us. There's very little snow on the ground through central Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Northern parts of the states will have a fair amount. And notice down across parts of eastern Illinois, clouds actually forming off of that snow cover as it starts to melt farther to the south. But Doppler track right now, pretty quiet across the state. Maybe a couple flurries up north of Eagle River, but that's about it. Current temperatures here in Dane County, 22 right now in McFarland, 22 in Oregon, and 23 degrees in Verona. Across the rest of southern Wisconsin, temperatures are below freezing, already down to 19 degrees in Waukesha and in Juneau. But uh, most other areas seeing temperatures in the lower to middle 20s. Wind chills right now generally in the teens to single digits as the winds are still a little brisk out here. Look for mostly clear skies this evening. Temperatures dropping off to about 18 by late evening, but then temperatures will start to rise overnight. We've got a milder weekend on the way. I'll tell you how warm it'll get in just a few minutes. All right, Gary, thank you. Five former Tennessee police officers made their first appearance in court today pleading not guilty for their involvement in the violent death of Tyree Nichols. Bradley Blackburn has more. I'm waiting for somebody to wake me up. The family of Tyree Nichols addressed the media moments after the five former Memphis police officers accused of killing him made their first court appearance. We have to start this process of justice right now. And I want each and every one of those police officers to be able to look me in the face. The officers looked straight ahead as they pleaded not guilty to second degree murder and other charges. At this time, we waive the formal reading of the indictment off of the court. A plea of not guilty. 
The 29-year-old died in a hospital just three days after being pulled over and brutally beaten by the black officers in an incident caught on camera. When you look at the video, there was no dignity there. Nichols is the latest police-involved death to spark nationwide outrage and protests. The Nichols family and their attorneys have also raised questions about police culture and training. Who Tyree was, was what you saw in that video. While everybody else was escalating it, using excessive force, Tyree was de-escalating, trying to do everything in his power to remain calm. An attorney for one of the officers charged previewed his defense. This is a country where black people are incarcerated at five times the rate of white people. A country where black people are 7.5 times more likely to be wrongfully convicted of murder than white people. The five officers involved in Nichols' death are all out on bond and are due back in court in May. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News. Two other Memphis police officers have also been relieved of duty as a result of the attack, as well as three fire department EMTs who responded to the scene. In the wake of that police beating and after a tumultuous few years between police and some of the communities they serve, law enforcement recruitment has taken a hit. Some departments are rapidly implementing new strategies to attract talent to the job, including in our nation's capital. Officers there are being offered a housing incentive and a $20,000 signing bonus. The head of the police executive research forum says that's great, but that does not fix the issue of broader reform. Maybe we ought to think about, you know, 10 regional academies around the country that teach, you know, what we think professional policing should be. If all goes according to strategy, the big starting paychecks should send more recruits flocking to police departments nationwide. The spring primary election is next Tuesday, and if you want to vote, today is your last chance to register early. Registration will not be available this weekend or Monday, but you can register on Election Day. If you moved before January 24th, even to a new apartment in the same building, you'll need to update your voter registration. You can check your registration status on myvote.wi.gov. You'll also find a list of early voters voting locations on our website, channel3000.com. At the top of the ticket for the election on Tuesday is the race for Wisconsin Supreme Court. And you may have already seen the countless ads running in that race. Here for a breakdown is our political reporter, Will Keneally. Will? So why have we seen so many ads already in this race? That's because it's on pace to break records as the most expensive state Supreme Court race in Wisconsin history. And leading the pack is liberal candidate Janet Protasewicz. She's putting hundreds of thousands of dollars into an ad buy before the primary. And these early ads can help introduce the candidates to voters, especially in low turnout elections where voters don't really know who they are. And Protasewicz wants this to be the first message that voters see. I believe in a woman's freedom to make her own decision on abortion. It's time for a change. So Protosiewicz has taken the unusual step here for judicial candidates and publicly declared a stance on a policy issue like abortion, even calling out the two conservative candidates in the race who have both received pro-life endorsements. So coming up tonight at 6, we'll have a full analysis of these claims of one of the Protosiewicz ads that you see on the air. And this in, of course, our Reality Check series. All right, Will, thank you. And to hear more from the candidates in the race, tune in this Sunday to For the Record, where we will share our special report on the race. You'll get to hear where the candidates stand on the issues and also what's at stake in this election that has captured national attention. We sat down with two of those advocates working on the ground to mobilize voters on the issue of abortion. There's just so much at stake. Uh, electing a judge that, you know, that shares our values um, about protecting the rights of all people is critical. This will be our biggest effort, bigger than the effort that we led actually for the fall election. This one state Supreme Court seat has the power to shift the balance of the court and opens the door to overturning the state's abortion ban. Again, tune in for the whole conversation Sunday morning, 1030 on For the Record. That's right after CBS's Face the Nation. Teachers from Wanakee Intermediate School want their students to know they can make a difference even as far away as Venezuela. Our Nicole Herzog was at the school today to find out how fifth and sixth graders are sending love from across the world. Nicole? 
While crayons, pencils, and backpacks may seem like everyday basics for Wanaki students, but for kids in Venezuela, getting access to those supplies can make a world of difference. It all started last year when fifth graders at Wanaki Intermediate School found out about a school in Venezuela that needed their help. The students were able to raise money to send seven boxes of school supplies there. But this year, their teachers are asking them to aim even higher. But all that hard work will come with a special reward. Teachers in other schools have shaved their hair before as a kind of a reward, but I don't have much to shave up there. And so, yeah, so we offered the weird beard, so they're going to get to design something weird. And then next week, we're going to let them shave the design, which <laughs> might, might be a little risky, but we'll see how it goes. And even though those students are excited to give their teacher a makeover, they say the real reward is helping other kids who are less fortunate. And coming up tonight at 6, you'll hear from students in that class and just how much they're impacting kids in Venezuela. All right, Nicole, we want to see the beard, looking too. Looking forward to yeah. that. All right, Nicole, thank you. And it's National Random Acts of Kindness Day. You know the old saying, kindness goes a long way. SSM health officials say it's also associated with numerous health and mental health benefits. You know, you might be flooded with a rush of uh, positive emotion. And anytime you're feeling those positive emotions, I think downstream, it, uh, it, it helps with your own mental health too. Studies show doing random acts of kindness boosts serotonin, oxytocin, and endorphin levels in the brain. Those help improve your mood and motivation. It could be as simple as holding open a door or paying for a stranger's coffee. National Random Acts of Kindness Day is a reminder to have compassion and be selfless. Be kind to each other every day. Next at 5, what will the weather be like this weekend? Gary will rejoin us with the latest. Plus, how you can help support local black businesses this weekend. We'll have the details after the break. And later, how much can COVID infections boost our natural immunity? We'll take a closer look at what new research is showing. That's coming up tonight at 6. Wall Street closing the week with mixed numbers. The Dow jumping almost 130 points. The NASDAQ falls 69. S&P 500 loses 11. And we'll be right back. Furniture and Appliance Mart's President's Day weekend blowout event is here. Find doorbuster appliances like this Frigidaire built-in dishwasher, now just $5.49. Or the Samana Gas Range, now just $4.99. At Furniture and Appliance Mart, inside Ashley off the Beltline in East Springs Drive. This is how it feels to do more with less asthma, thanks to Dupixent. Dupixent is not for sudden breathing problems. It's an add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma and can help improve lung function for better breathing. In as little as two weeks, Dupixent helps prevent asthma attacks and can even reduce or eliminate oral steroids. Imagine that. Dupixent can cause allergic reactions that can be severe. Get help right away if you have rash, chest pain, worsening shortness of breath, tingling, or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor about new or worsening joint aches and pain or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines, including steroids, without talking to your doctor. Who knows what you can do when you do more with less asthma? Ask your asthma specialist about Dupixent. During Steinhoffel's President's Day mattress sale, there's no better time to buy your new mattress. Steinhoffel's has all the best brands at the guaranteed lowest prices. Get a purple queen mattress just $22 per month, a Tempur-Pedic only $38 per month, upgrade to a Beautyrest Black for only $44 per month, and with Steinhoffel's special 72-month financing, your new mattress just got more affordable. Hurry in, this sale won't last long at Steinhoffel's and Steinhoffel's.com. We depend on judges to keep our families safe. But Jennifer Doro has a long history of keeping criminals, even sexual predators, out of prison. As a judge, Doro lets criminals off easy so often, a fellow judge questioned her soft treatment of convicted criminals. She even gave a convicted domestic abuser two days to report to prison, time he used to violently assault his own family members. Jennifer Doro lets criminals off the hook, and that has no place on our Supreme Court. 
Ashley Home Store's President's Day Weekend Blowout is here. This Saturday through Monday, get the very best deals of the season on our furniture door busters for your living room, dining room, and bedroom, now up to 60% off. This weekend only at Ashley Home Store. A local school is fundraising for another school in another continent. Why this project hits so close to home for area students. And with primary day just a few days away, Will Keneally has a reality check on Supreme Court candidate Janet Protasewicz's ad on abortion. News 3 Now, first warm weather. Trust the experience of Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti and the first warm weather team to help you plan your day and alert you whenever and wherever you need it. First warm weather, keeping you ahead of the storms. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. Residents of East Palestine, Ohio are expressing their anger and their fear two weeks now after that toxic train derailment upended their lives. Despite assurance from Ohio's governor and the EPA administrator that the water is safe to drink, many residents don't feel comfortable doing so. Many also don't believe the air is safe, describing burning sensations in their throats and noses when they entered their homes after the derailment. Governor Mike DeWine told residents today that he is determined to hold the rail operator Norfolk Southern accountable. Whatever damages have been caused, the railroad is responsible for those damages. Norfolk Southern said it'll stay in East Palestine for as long as it takes to ensure the recovery for residents. The company began cutting $1,000 inconvenience checks for residents, a number some are saying is simply not enough. The company's problems are seemingly piling up, with yet another train derailment taking place outside Detroit just yesterday. Luckily, the only train car carrying hazardous materials there did not leak. There are just two weekends left in this Black History Month. If you're looking for more ways to celebrate and check out what some local businesses have to offer, a one day only pop up shop might pique your interest. Tahalil Moedin has your preview for Minding My Black Owned Business. Tequila Harper is just about done setting up. I think people are excited to come out. An event she spent months helping plan, now just hours away. We like to have our doors open for the community. That's what we're here for. The Elver Park Neighborhood Center is set to host its first pop-up shopping experience supporting black and brown owned local businesses in Madison. 35 of them, including the youngest participant at just six years old and his lemonade stand, will fill this room with the best products they have to offer. Being in the scene and in the know, like once people see you and they talk to you and they get your business card and they figure out how we can contact this person and stuff. And for Harper, the event is not only a way to celebrate Black History Month, but to give back. I was raised in this community. I lived on Teresa Terrace, so I just feel like it's all full circle. She says minding my black owned business is about more than just dollars and cents, but also a chance to bring black people together. Sometimes it's hard to like, find out who is like hosting something or when are they doing it or we only have them in the summer because the weather is nice and it's outside. So I just, the idea just popped in to do it and bring it. She's also hoping Saturday's gathering inspires others to get engaged. But for now, it's lights out until these doors open again to the community. In Madison, Tehlil Mahdeen, News 3 Now. And if you want to see what these vendors have to offer, Minding My Black Owned Business runs from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. tomorrow at the Elver Park Neighborhood Center. It's going to be a nice day to check it out. A sunny Friday to melt off some of that snow. Gary has the weekend forecast. Gary? We didn't melt off very much today because temperatures stay below freezing, but that will change over the weekend. Some of the snowfall reports from yesterday, they were heavier from Dane County southward. Uh, Sandy Hook in the southern portion of Grant County, seven inches of snow, six inches in Darlington, six in Jefferson uh, here at the station, just shy of six inches, five inches in Hazel Green in Grant County, and then uh, the airport in Madison, 3.4 inches. Farther to the north, different story. 3.4 inches in Portage, uh, Reedsburg just shy of three inches, Richland Center a little over two, Westfield two inches, and then Steuben in Grant, or, uh, Crawford County, less than an inch in Friendship, uh, north of the Dells, just two tenths of an inch of snow. Three things you need to know in the forecast, look for a mild weekend. Highs will be back in the lower 40s. Nighttime low temperatures tomorrow night will stay at or above freezing, so we will mel be melting some of that snow, but we'll gradually turn colder next week, and then we turn our attention to a storm system from late Tuesday through Thursday that could start out as some 
light snow and then maybe mixed with some sleet and freezing rain and then back to snow on the tail end. Over the next five days or the next 10 days, the next five days, we'll see temperatures at or above normal. But we get into the latter part of next week and those temperatures drop below normal. That's when that when that change takes place, that's when we have the potential for a storm system. The European computer model beginning at uh, 12 a.m. Wednesday morning shows some light snow across southern Wisconsin. Then uh, maybe a little bit of a break in the morning and early afternoon before some more light snow and then mixed precipitation starts to develop and move in from the south. Notice the winds near the ground out of the northeast bringing in cold air near the ground but rain to the south and the warmer air changes the snow farther to the north and that could lead to a period of some sleet and freezing rain and then eventually shifting back over to snow. But by that time, the main part of the storm lifts into uh, northern Wisconsin. The GFS computer model from the U.S. government shows a warmer situation with more in the way of rain or mixed precipitation here and the heavier snow farther to the north. So the European computer model shows the potential for a major winter storm in the northern part of the state. The GFS computer model, even heavier snow in the northern part of the state. But notice Madison, <laughs> less than an inch of snow. However, freezing rain, that's another consideration. The European computer model shows perhaps as much as three quarters of an inch of ice accumulation across parts of northern Illinois and the GFS computer model shifts that freezing rain farther to the north and then changes us to rain in Madison. So a lot of questions on the storm, not a lot of agreement in the models other than the fact that there'll be a big storm system around here. Planning your night, look for clear skies. Temperatures dropping to about 18 in Madison Middleton before rising overnight. Low of 23 in Verona and 22 in Dalyville. For tomorrow, look for skies to be partly sunny. It will be milder with a high temperature of 41 degrees. As we look at your 7 to 10 day forecast, look for high temperatures in the lower 40s for Saturday and Sunday. Monday, we drop back to 37, maybe a couple of flurries. And then it's Tuesday night into Wednesday with some light snow, mixing with some sleet and freezing rain Wednesday, and then changing back to snow on Thursday, high of 30 Thursday, and then falling temperatures with windy conditions. Friday, down to 22, but then uh, temperatures rebound back closer to normal for next weekend, maybe a chance of snow showers. Friday night and Saturday morning. As we check out first worn traffic, you can see right now there's the view of the Beltline at Park Street. Notice the traffic is backed up. Uh, we had a report of uh, an accident on the eastbound Beltline near Monona Drive, and notice the traffic is backed up almost all the way to Verona Road on the eastbound Beltline. So right now, almost a 45-minute trip on the eastbound Beltline heading out of Madison, coming back in from the west, a 16-minute trip from the interstate to University Avenue. Right now, 25 minutes on the belt uh, on I-39. 90 from the Beltline to Janesville. U.S. 12 middle to the Sauk City takes you 17 minutes. Downtown to Sun Prairie, East Washington Avenue, and U.S. 151 is a 19 minute trip. That's your news for now for sworn traffic. All right, Gary, thank you. And next at 5, we'll preview a new series that shines a light on news and untold stories in the black community. Stay with us. News 3 Now First Worn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Us. This isn't us. Is it? Uh-huh. Let's take a break from our devices for five days, five hours, or even just five minutes. And let's see what we find. Hey, bud. U.S. Cellular. Built for us. I pick and save. We Everyone. Superior Wisconsin. It's a must stop for people who enjoy the sweeter side of life. After violence turned Waukesha's Christmas parade into tragedy, Judge Jennifer Doro ensured justice was served, maintaining order, protecting the rights of victims. Her grace under fire won praise nationally. Now Judge Jennifer Doro is ready to serve on the Supreme Court. Wife, mother, prosecutor. Judge Doro's life's work is keeping Wisconsin families safe. It's no surprise Judge Doro is law enforcement's choice. The tested judicial leader, Judge Jennifer Doro for Supreme Court. Are you a T-Mobile customer in Wisconsin? Recently, T-Mobile disclosed that 37 million customer accounts were hacked, putting your personal information at risk. Don't let identity theft ruin your credit score and cost you thousands of dollars. Call Lawton and Gates for a free consultation and learn your rights. Do you want to create your dream home? 
then you should attend the Madison Build, Remodel, and Landscape Show, where admission is free. This Friday, Saturday, and Sunday only at the Monona Terrace Convention Center. Make contacts, hire contractors, explore the best in kitchens, baths, and custom remodeling, windows, doors, and room additions. Whatever improvements your home needs, you'll find solutions at the Build, Remodel, and Landscape Show. Free admission this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday only at the Monona Terrace Convention Center. Experience does count. When you're shopping for new furniture, a mattress set, or flooring, come to the experts at McGann Furniture and Flooring in Baraboo. Our experienced staff is well-trained in home decorating and will answer all your questions so you can buy with confidence. You'll find big city selection and an enjoyable shopping experience. And remember, we don't raise prices only to lower them later for a sale. Come see the difference experience can make at McGann Furniture and Flooring, downtown Baraboo. When your door is always open, so is the fridge. At Pick and Save, however you shop, in-store, pickup, or delivery, you get the same great prices, deals, and rewards. That's a win-win-win. Pick and Save, fresh for everyone. I just got the new Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra from US Cellular. With nitography, it can take selfies in low light. Click. Amazing, can it go back in the back? Yeah, it can go back in the back. Okay. The new Samsung Galaxy S23, free for everyone from US Cellular. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. CBS News, in collaboration with BET, is launching a new series focused on features and news that impact the black community. American Black shines a light on the untold stories, providing opportunities to address timely issues. And Skylar Henry shares a preview. A grassroots battle is underway to dismantle black history education. And the premiere episode of America in Black takes it on. You're teaching children to hate others because of their skin color. The monthly news magazine will focus on original storytelling and newsmaker profiles from the black point of view. If we do our job right, you've got a fuller perspective than you've seen before. Former BET news anchor Ed Gordon is back after an 18-year hiatus, joining a lineup of award-winning journalists to examine issues from banning black history education. What are they actually mad about? To my deep dive into the growing tactic of using rap lyrics in court cases and how often those words are considered to be real fiction versus, fake versus real. truth. I'm going 80 <laughs> fake and 20% real. Like, yeah. Really? Because you got to listen to what they're really saying. Like, I don't think everybody done really shot somebody or, mm. you know, but... Hey, that's what people like to hear. I'm saying 90-10. <laughs> really? <laughs> the premiere also features a profile with original dream girl Cheryl Lee Ralph living that her best Cheryl life. Ralph. This is what believing looks like. The series aims to bring a wider lens to important issues, including perspectives that are too often neglected. Now we have an opportunity to strip away maybe some of the pleasantries we had put on racism and inclusion uh, and really deal with it from an aspect of truth. We've got to find a way to, you know, eradicate the division. It won't be easy, but it's a fight we all have to have. A fight illuminated with lights and cameras to explore untold stories about the American experience. Skyler Henry, CBS News, New York. America in Black debuts this Sunday night at 9. And episodes will be available on BET Plus and also the CBS News streaming network. We'll have a final check of your weekend first worn forecast after a short break. I'm voting for Judge Janet Protasiewicz for Supreme Court. She believes in our freedom to make our own decisions when it comes to abortion. Extremists want to ban abortion. Even in cases of rape and the health of the mother. Judge Janet Protasiewicz is the change Wisconsin needs. Race to savings on your kitchen and bathroom update at Menards. Mister creates thoughtfully designed faucets and fixtures that fit perfectly into your life. Like this uniquely modern design pen bathroom faucet. Now in sale for $119.99. Update your kitchen and bath with countertops from Menards. Choose from quartz, laminate, and solid surface to give your kitchen a new look. Menards countertops offer the ease of do-it-yourself. Race to savings now at Menards. Save big money at Menards. At Lawton Cates, your life counts is more than just a slogan. It's providing guidance after a serious accident. From the first phone call, we're by your side, helping with the important decisions. Not just for your medical care, but for your family's peace of mind. 
The Lawton Cates team combines experience and genuine compassion because we know how much is at stake and we're dedicated to ensuring you can heal and move forward. At Lawton Cates, your life counts. Call today for a free consultation. Lake Ridge may be a new name, but it isn't a new bank. It's one built on over a century of community commitment. One equipped with all the knowledge and resources of 145 collective years of experience. Monona Bank and State Bank of Cross Plains are coming together as one. As Lake Ridge Bank, we're doing more together for you. I became an orthopedic surgeon for a lot of reasons. For a lot of reasons. For a lot of reasons. To help you take walks again. To ease your pain. To rebuild your strength. And at every step along the way. We take the time to answer all your questions. We're here because we care. We care about you. 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 They care about me. Sauk Prairie Healthcare Orthopedics, now offering robotic assisted knee replacement. There's nothing like a great night's sleep on a new Beautyrest mattress from Steinhoffels. Right now, save up to $900 on adjustable base sets. Queen Beautyrest mattresses start at just $299. Or step up to the new Beautyrest Black and get $200 in Steinhoffels cash, plus a $100 MasterCard rewards card. And with Steinhoffels 72-month financing, your new mattress just got more affordable. So save big and rest easy on your new Beautyrest mattress from Steinhoffels. A former prosecutor, now circuit court judge, Janet Protasewicz. On the Supreme Court, she'll be a common sense judge. She believes in abortion rights, fairness for all, and protecting public safety. Janet Protasewicz for Supreme Court. Gary's back with a final check of the forecast. Yeah, uh, sunny out there right now. Take a look at the live view from the uh, WISC TV Sky Cam. Going to be a pretty sunset in the west there. There's the Platteville Queen Bee Radio Sky Cam. Just as nice, not a cloud around. Temperatures are on the cold side, though. 22 Madison, 21 Janesville. It's actually a little warmer to the north and west where there's less snow on the ground. The cross right now at 30 degrees. As we check Dane County right now, 21 Stoughton, 21 in Edgerton, and 21 degrees in Sun Prairie. Look for more. Mostly clear skies this evening. Temperatures dropping off into the upper teens before they start rising later tonight. Gary, thank you. CBS Evening News is next. We're back in 30 minutes with News Renow at 6.